Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Jolene Bisset Joseph. John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States of America, once said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you are a leader. Now, with that quote in mind, I would like to introduce you to our guest for today, and his name is actually Mr. Clement Wolf Soulage, and he is the new Director of, the Info of Information Services at the Government Information Service. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Hello, Tiara, how are you doing? Thank you. Right. Now, Mr. Wolf Soulage assumed his responsibilities as the Director of Information Services on the 31st of March 2017 and obtained the mandate of giving strategic direction to GIS and NTN with a view to enhancing public understanding of government programs policies and activities. So once again, Mr. Wolf Solage, thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. Okay, and can you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? For people out there that don't know you as a person, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually came along to becoming the Director of Information Services at the Government Information Service. Yes, well, first of all, I welcome the opportunity to be here with you today. Um, as you know, I lived in Germany for 17 years, actually, and I lectured um, business communications uh, business economics, management, uh, scientific writing at various universities in Germany. Mm -hmm. I also worked extensively um, in the private sector doing consultancy work in terms of uh, team building, uh, intercultural uh, competence. Uh, I did lots of soft skills, business English courses on behalf of the University of Cambridge. Mm -hmm. All right. Until now, I've written three books. The first book um, entitled uh, Management English Intelligence. English for International uh, Management, which of course focuses on the principles of management, the functions of management, uh, finance, marketing, etc. Um, I also wrote a second book um, entitled um, English for International Economics, Market Economy, mm -hmm. which explore, explores the, the intrigues of, 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 of the global economy. And in this book, I'm looking at the uh, derivatives markets, I'm looking at the financial, complex financial systems, and of course, international trade, amongst other topics. Mm -hmm. My third book was launched last, last year, July, uh, entitled um, uh, Conscience of a Progressive. And in that particular publication, I'm looking at foreign policy. I'm also looking at um, education matters, health issues, and so on. Okay. So um, the first two books actually were written for two of the universities where I worked in Germany, mm -hmm. and they were used as official textbooks. Okay, wow, that's a lot. Okay, yes. <laughs> brilliant. Okay, now tell me a little bit about the role of the Director of Information Services here at um, the GIS because the people hear a lot about titles but they don't actually understand what um, it actually means for people to be carry those titles and what the roles are that they have to actually carry out. So tell us a little bit about the role of the Director. Right, so the role of the Director is to provide basically strategic leadership to the organization okay. and that is um, to recommend for implementation uh, policy directives, policy issues. Um, I'm also responsible for networking, building relationships with the press, mm -hmm. with agencies, with um, NGOs as well. Um, I will be working very closely with, with the government media on messaging and strategy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is basically in terms of the collection and dissemination of information. Okay. I also serve as an advisor to the, to the government, actually, and different departments on public relations matters. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'll be working very closely with um, NEMO in terms of providing public education to, um, on various issues okay. relating to uh, disasters okay. and disaster management. Okay, all right, brilliant. Now, a lot of people, again, out there know um, the Government Information Service as, uh, you know, a, a, a medium by which they can learn about the government and such like. But what is your vision coming in as the new director for the GIS? Where do you see the GIS actually going in the future? Right. Well, first of all, the, the role of the GIS is to enhance and promote public understanding mm -hmm. of government policies, uh, decisions, and activities. And uh, we are in the process of repositioning the brand 
of the GIS. That is to build a, a modern information society mm -hmm. based on three uh, pillars. First, excellent news production, mm -hmm. all right? The production of documentaries and of course backstories and what I call dialogue and interface. Mm -hmm. uh, the hosting of, of interviews and panel discussions. Now, the, in effect, we here at GIS uh, are pursuing a concept of what we call broader casting as opposed to broadcasting, okay. where we're trying to move away from the nationalistic approach to reporting all right, and focusing more on, of course, the region and in, on international issues as well. Um, GIS in the past has not been truly national, really. Mm -hmm. Everything has been orchestrated around Castries and Groselet. Right. And now the objective, the broad objective, is to give more coverage to towns and cities, mm -hmm. all right, interviewing the leaders and knowing exactly, or exposing the, the society, the country, to uh, initiatives, activities going on in the small, in the small um, towns and villages across the island. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, very soon we'll have a, a program called community outreach, mm -hmm. where we'll be going out to, into the various communities, talking to leaders really, and showing the kinds of infrastructural work and development taking place in those communities, mm -hmm. all right? Um, still, with reference to this concept of broader casting, will be um, the, the staff of the GIS, information officers, information assistants, mm -hmm. will immerse themselves in the various ministries mm -hmm. so that they could be close to the stories, mm -hmm. they, they do a bit of networking, build closer contact so that the government does not have to come to the GIS, the GIS will come to the government, right. all right? So I mentioned, Geraldine, the, the point of repositioning the GIS and building a modern information society. Mm -hmm. I mean, the information age is upon us, really, mm -hmm. and uh, it's inexorably so. Uh, we have moved away from agricultural-based economies, we've moved away from manufacturing-based economies, now we talk about um, talent intensive economies, we talk about service-oriented economies, mm -hmm. knowledge-based economies, mm -hmm. all right? Um, primary production, secondary production, tertiary production is no more. We talk about quaternary and quinary, mm -hmm. which has a lot to do with the uh, information economy, actually, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, Capital-intensive industries, labor-intensive, now have been translated or transformed into uh, information, data-centric uh, industries, mm -hmm. and most importantly, E economists um, uh, decades ago used to talk about the production factors, mm -hmm. land, labor, capital, and, and entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, it's land, labor, capital, entrepreneur, and information. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, I've always said, actually, the government has uh, five levers uh, with which they could um, impact in society, influence mm -hmm. in the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, one is spending, uh, the other is taxation, mm -hmm. regulation, legislation, but the most important is communication. And with this lever, actually, you have the power to, to build trust in society. Okay. You have the power to spread knowledge and information. Mm -hmm. all right? you, have to, you, you actually have the power to um, create this sustainable change that you wish to have in any society. Okay. But most importantly, um, Geraldine, um, you can develop policies, social economic policies, based on the feedback that you actually get from your people. Okay, brilliant. Now, I don't want to cut you there because this is very interesting, mm -hmm. but it's time for us to just have a quick break. So please stay tuned and join us after this commercial break. Foya, qui sa ou ka fè depi lè ya? Mwen vle achete sou li ya sou internet la. Mais l'autre kwa, mwen te fè sa. Ma te jwenn bagay la piesan. Mwen just gaspye la jen mwen. Ah, e be foya. Tale, la kay ni a bagay yu ka kouye post code. So mwen kwe ou pa kay ped sou li ou fwa sa ha. Postcode, sak sa. A postcode, si a group let ek lime ou, ki sa fe yo sav kote pou men ne pa che ou, le ou poste yo. Kon sa, a lot nan pou postcode, se zip code. Postcode, ka e de ou jwen sou le ou pli vit, si de, e be pli peyi ni mem nou a. Postcode la, ka e de se pa che a ou yve, an peyi a, yo si po se ou yve. Mwen just kou mwen se aste bagay a sou internet la. Men ou yve. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, vous s'accouillez sur Lucha Postal Services et qui vous a aidé. Hum, il faut y avoir moins aimé ça. 
Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I am Jordan Bisset Joseph, and once again, I am joined by Mr. Clement Wolf Soulage, who is the Director of Information Services here at the GIS. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right, great. Now, we were talking a lot about um, your vision for the GIS before we went to the break. Mm -hmm. However, I know that, again, even from um, a lot of the stuff that you have studied, a lot of the places you have been, you, you have certain opinions on leadership, executive leadership mm -hmm, and such mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your philosophy in regards to that? Right. I, I see actually a leader as a master of pursuitology, mm -hmm. meaning somebody who harnesses and exploits and, and the, the impact of knowledge, of excellence, mm -hmm. of results and relationship. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I see a leader in terms of qualities being a visionary, you know, having energy, having purpose, right. being an agent of change, yeah. somebody who shows the way forward, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You find quite often um, a very effective leader could turn around a very demoralized organization. All right? So, so basically, um, leadership is quite different from what we call management mm -hmm. in that leadership is, is a quality. Right. People sometimes confuse those two terms, whereas management is a position. And I could just bring in uh, administration into the whole uh, debate as well. Mm -hmm. And administration being an activity. So okay. there's actual difference. So leaders, leaders, and this is based on my, 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 my um, uh, deep-seated principles and mm -hmm. beliefs, leaders actually focus on people right. as opposed to managers who focus on work. So you find leaders are having followers yeah. as opposed to managers having subordinates, for example. Right, All right? okay. Now, okay. now Geraldine, th mm -hmm. there is a difference between, because you asked about executive leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, executive leadership actually would more be in tune with what we call transactional leadership, mm -hmm. All right? which, which, is, which is quite different from what we call transformational leadership. Transactional leadership is uh, the manager who allocates the scarce resources, mm -hmm. who tries to meet the deadlines, and of course the plans and so on, mm -hmm. as opposed to the transformational le leader who has impact on the, on the organization, mm -hmm. who influences the culture or transforms or even perhaps revolutionizes the culture. Okay. But executive leadership actually would have a lot to do with transactional leadership, that is getting things done. You know, yeah. Quite yeah. often we sit in meetings for hours, mm -hmm. we plan, we strategize, but nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. It just reminds me of Jack Welch's uh, very famous quotation, mm -hmm. um, uh, just decide on something and execute, execute, execute. Right. right. So the gist, the essence of management yeah. is in fact execution. Right, okay. Uh, something I wanted to ask you, although you've kind of partly um, answered it within your answer, mm -hmm. was that like, for instance, very often I've heard within society people complain about staff not being productive and such mm -hmm. like. So would you believe, would you say in that case, in your opinion, that has a lot to do with the leadership that, you know, whoever is at the helm yes. um, and steering the ship as such, would you say that, that that has an impact on how staff actually does perform? Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, staff performance and effectiveness is a function of good leadership. Right. And of course, um, the old theorists mm -hmm. saw human relations and, and people welfare as typical metric mm -hmm. and, and, and guides of, of good leadership. Mm -hmm. um, here, right here at, at GIS, actually, I've embarked on a program of training the staff mm -hmm. in the various, specifically soft skills, mm -hmm. you know, uh, self-management in terms of um, uh, time management, interaction, team building, communication, right. organization, and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, on the 1st of June, uh, we're bringing in experts to, to do courses mm -hmm. on script writing, feature writing. I do believe that the performance of the staff in any organization mm -hmm. directly is it's, it's hinged directly on the training of the staff. Okay. The productivity yeah. and the economy mm -hmm. of work actually has a lot to do with the training that the staff receives. Yeah, yeah. So you, you believe it's directly linked then? So Absolutely. Training is fundamental. Yes, and one of my main priorities, I call it strategic priorities, mm -hmm. is to embark on a, a hefty training, of, of a hefty program of training okay. in all the areas, not only the technical skills, mm -hmm. but also uh, conceptual and soft skills, human skills. Okay, cool, all right. Now, in that, in that case, um, there's a lot of young people out there who may see within themselves something of, of good leadership that so they could actually carry on and obtain a position where they could be leaders within mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them? What would you say they should do to maybe even um, bring that side of them out of themselves even more so? What would you say, which, what 
could they look towards? Is there anything, any advice you could give them in regards to, I don't know, I mean, some training maybe they can get for themselves, right. maybe even the, the way that they, you know, communicate with people, how they get on with people. What would you say to any young person that believes they could be a leader, you know, yes. how they can go forward? Well, first, Geraldine, I would say they need to use every opportunity mm -hmm. right now to become a leader and to practice leadership. Okay. At the school level, actually, it could be, it could be uh, primary school, secondary school, mm -hmm. at the club level, at the community level. Mm -hmm. All right. One of the things I, I saw was quite prevalent in Germany is the use of mentorship programs, for example. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. People, people recognize mentors at universities and mm -hmm. schools, yeah. and they, f they try to follow things that the things that that person does for right. example the books that they write and so on the speeches that they give and and so on so uh, mentorship is a very effective way to 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 um to, to create this sense of leadership in a person mm -hmm. from very early mm -hmm. remain focused on the things that you want to achieve in life really mm -hmm. all right so 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 this 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 remains a problem uh, people start off having grand goals and objectives and somewhere along the line they get distracted mm -hmm. right? somewhere along the road they get distracted um, Develop soft skills, mm -hmm. particularly emotional intelligence. Okay. And uh, we know Daniel Goldman wrote a, a book about leadership and emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And a leader is, is supposed to be in a position to understand uh, his people, mm -hmm. to empathize with his people, to sympathize, to build trust. Right. And all of this is part of the concept of emotional intelligence. All right? So today, there's a lot of focus placed on emotional intelligence mm -hmm. as a function of, right. of leadership. Really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and finally, I, I would say acquire the knowledge. Mm -hmm. so, uh, acquire as much as you can in, in terms of knowledge. I spoke of leadership a while ago as being, or leader being a master mm -hmm. of pursuitology. Right. You know, somebody who, who, has, um, who has the ability to harness and exploit knowledge yeah. and use knowledge uh, very wisely and, and of course aspire to excellence. But um, the key point in terms of, of, of aspiring to, 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 to leadership mm -hmm. is to practice it when you, when you have the opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's brilliant. I like that the, what you said about the mentors and such like, and, of the, and honestly, also the, the part about making sure that they practice leadership as much as possible. Because um, my father always, always said to me that um, it's just not, it's, we're not just talking about um, just practicing things, good practice That's right. can also make perfect. So indeed. I guess the more, the more you practice, the more you'll I, indeed, indeed. You know, endeavor to reach where you're going. Indeed. Well, Mr. Sulaj, before we actually end today, because it's actually we're gonna be rounding off very soon, is there anything you'd like to add? Maybe even in regards to what people out there can look for to in regards to the GIS? Yes. Well, there's no doubt about it that we're going to have, we're going to face structural and financial challenges at the GIS. Mm -hmm. But I believe with the right strategic leadership, we could turn GIS into a, a cascade and agent of efficiency and change, mm -hmm. really. Um, we have to focus on better organizing mm -hmm. the entity mm -hmm. and bring out the best in, in the staff. And uh, on that note, uh, Geraldine, I'll leave you with a, a, very, a very famous quotation by J.K. Galbraith, mm -hmm. who once said, it's not the, the images of ideology that determines the uh, direction of economic society, mm -hmm. but proper organization and the use of technology. Mm -hmm. So at the GIS, actually, we intend to make use of the technology available and to better organize our structures and our systems to provide the kind of service to the public. Okay. Brilliant. Well, Mr. Wolf Sulaj, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much indeed. And thank everybody out there for tuning in. And I'd just like to say from everybody here at the GIS, please do stay tuned to the National Television Network. Bye-bye.